in the first game in the series, it's bound to happen to have a few issues, but that's what a sequel is for, which I'll be getting into soon. Um, that cut a while. My apologies, I made a video on the first game, so if you want to know my detailed thoughts, then you can check that one out, which will be appearing on the title card. I will be tracking similar gameplay details as well as mentioning some story plots for the first game, as the developers intend for you to play that one first before diving into the sequel. My overall thoughts for Donvot 1 was that it was an enjoyable game, but had some problems that many first games in the series do. As a striker Donvot 2 was released two years after the original on the Nintendo 3DS eShop, but was also included in the Striker pack alongside the first game a year after its initial release. That includes all the DLC content from the 3DS version, plus an additional song. There is also a standalone release on the PC, just like the first game. So, is Donvolt 2 any good? The story starts off with the Simurati group executives having a meeting on an airship talking about their current struggles to keep afloat since their leader Nova was taken out of the picture in the first game. Not yon during the discussion, the airship is being ambushed and is about to crash into a skyscraper. Dunvolt infiltrates the airship and attempts to stop it from gliding. With the surprise assistance from Copin, the Chiazin course is prevented. While both DV and Copin are distracted, they are meaty ambushed by a new adept with ice powers as well as Zonda, one of the adepts from the previous game, who was presumed dead by Copin, but somehow survived. Zonda reveals her true form, which turns out to be a small girl? Okay. Whatever anime game, you do you, I guess. I mean, nothing says ominous and menacing. You act a little Yuyuta girl. Anyway, Zonda traps Joel in a mirror and scatters her into many pieces, so Natsi can use the mirror swords for her nefarious world domination plan. Copin manages to grab one of the swords and flees the scene, along with his sister Meta, who was rescued by GV in the opening stage. GV remains hold of one too, that contains Zul, who survived the attack, but is a lot smaller and weaker. ZV and Copin take on Zonda's seven adepts to gather the rest of the swords and stop her steam. There is a lot of stuff happening in the intro stage, and if you haven't played the first game, then you will probably not understand the details during the rest of the story. I can see why they bundled them up in the striker pack. Even still, I like how the series embraces its story and world building for being in a genre that doesn't usually focus on it. Plus, some of the main casts are enjoyable with their own motivations. With Copian being playable now, you get to see more of his human side, as before we only saw him as the dead Christian boy who was on a mission from God to kill the adepts. We see him acting like a protective brother towards his mute sister Myrtle, and even has conversations with his maid Nori and his robot turned Voltio partner Yoya, whose upbeat and snarky personality balances well with Copin's serious one. I liked how the villains are treated too. I liked how an adept that was from the previous game basically got promoted as the main antagonist. It's as if a robot master that Woodman replaced Dr. Wai as the main villain. The seven are a good cast of villains, with one or two of them surprising me in my first playthrough. No, I would say I winced when Tetsuo spoke in hashtags and yowls. It reminded me of that Steve Buscemi kip from 30 Rock. How do you do, fellow kids? What? It felt dated. Besides his dialogues on one level, the other writing is good. Then reading it, as Dunvolt 2 has the same issue as Dunvolt 1, where it can be difficult to read the dialogue while in the middle of fighting in the stages, since the game only has a Japanese dub. I think more people would be more into this world and its characters 
if people were to listen to an India stub while concentrating on the gameplay. If you aren't a fan of the story and decide to replay the game again, then you can just ignore it on repeated playthroughs. You can also turn it off in game conversations too once you beat a level if you don't care about the interactions. Not much has changed drastically in the core gameplay department, going through multiple platforming stages with a boss at the end. CV still plays very similar to the first game and he's still a lot of fun to control with his electric powers as well as the cadden system. In my review of the first game, I mentioned the Tudor systems and the various settings. You got this, where you won't use your skull combo, but won't get a lot of points, courses, the default in which you get free chances, and Vectius, which rewards you the most points, but get hit once and your score will reset. Well, I didn't realise that the Tudor system was first introduced in Don Vault 2 and was later patched in Don Vault 1. While DV is still pretty much the same, we have a new playable character with Copen, who was meant to be the only playable character, with DV being an antagonist and the leader of the Sumeradi group, but that idea was strapped. My guess is that they didn't want to alienate older fans by changing the playstyle and instead just included both characters to gently warm up to the idea, which I think was the right choice. Copen did eventually get his own game with Humanus Avenger, so Inti Trades got what they wanted at the end. Copen is an adept, unlike the majority of the cast, but he is equipped with a ton of gadgets that can go toe to toe against them. His main method of attack is dashing into enemies to tag them, then launches himself into the air and deals additional damage with his bullets and EX skills. His way of getting points is attacking multiple enemies in the air without touching the ground. Turpin takes some inspiration from Mega Man, as when he defeats a boss, he can gain their powers. Well, Copin's Voltioid robot, Yoya anyway, can use them, known as EX skills in the stages. The bosses in Turpin's route also have weaknesses, similar to the Mega Man robot masters, no they don't reset their patterns when they get hit by their weaknesses and just cause more damage while rewarding the player with more points. Since being more of an up close fighter, I did find fighting some of the bosses to be harder compared to the Azure Striker. It took me a while to understand how he works, but he became a lot of fun once I figured him out and just flying, wall bouncing and attacking enemies is thrilling. While he plays differently to GV, he still sticks to the core cadden gameplay mechanics. Reincarnation is back and works pretty much the same for GV. I believe it is random when you get resurrected, like the first game, but I wish I had the option to turn it off since you cannot gain points when you are in reincarnation mode. I do like that idea, especially for more casual and novice players, but I don't like it's forced upon you. Copen also has reincarnation thanks to Yoya, but unlike GV, who has infinite jumps and unlimited EMP, I have no idea what the benefits are besides coming back to life. If there are any changes, it's very noticeable. The materials and changes return, and like the original game, I'm not a fan of them. The materials are used to get equipment and new abilities. The materials are obtained at the end of the stages, however they are randomised, so if you're after an ability you want, then I hope Yady Yacht is on your side. Or you can go after the chances which will reward you with specific materials and items. The problem is the stage chances can only be on yacht once you beat a stage, Meaning if you're not A ranked in a level, you still have to complete the B ranked turns for that level. Why do I have to repeat the same cast? The materials and changes are optional for you to gain new abilities to make the game easier and completing the campaign isn't a hassle if you decide not to do them, but I do think it's a flaw that I hope would change for the third installment. Some people have criticised that Dumbbolt 2 is very sought, 
especially compared to the first game. And while yes, the stages have been halved from the original, bear in mind that we now have an additional character with his own campaign. Gunvolt 2 also has a lot extra stages and additional modes after the campaign, plus it is designed to keep the player to come back and learn its mechanics to get better. Doesn't mean it's not young, doesn't mean it's bad. I've had plenty of experiences with games that I felt dragged on a bit too long, especially within this current generation. While I had plenty of fun with games that only last a few hours, that to this day I still go back to. I felt that the ending in the first game could have dip around the end game, while with this game I mostly felt this was nicely paced. The true ending requirement wasn't as BS as the first, only requiring you to beat both campaigns, but I still thought it was annoying to replay the final stage multiple times. The visuals are pretty identical to the first one, but in t Traits does some amazing sprite work and the new rotations are a lot more varied. Now there are a few sprites that didn't seem to convert well between handheld to console. There are also a lot more cutscene portraits to give the story a bit more oomph and emotional impact. The console versions are at 60 FPS and for the most part it runs well, especially with all the fiasi particle effects. The only time I noticed a frame drop was when Tropin did his air stomp attack. I don't remember a much of the stage music, but I do like how the player is rewarded with some decent vulture songs performed by Zoe and Yoya when they reach the store threshold. Medu Sekigawa returns to voice Zoe, but we also have Yoya, who is voiced by Yurita Endo, who is known for her roles like in Angel's Free Piece and the Bang Dream series. If you like J-Pop, then you might enjoy some of these vulture songs. While there are a few issues that still remain from the original, I found Azure Striker Gunvolt 2 to be a great 2D platformer that surpasses the first one with a better vision, better bosses, more enemy variety, two enjoyable characters, and at a better pace. If you are into 2D platformers and want something to quickly pick up and play, then Azure Striker Gunvolt 2 has got you covered. The best way to play it, especially if you want to invest in the world and its characters, then I highly suggest getting the Striker Pack. I'm looking forward to trying out Human Avenger at some point in the future, and excited to play Dawnfall 3 next year. <laughs> Thank you.